Well, praise God. Welcome, Facebook Live friends. Welcome, welcome <clears throat> to Wednesday evening Bible study. Amen. I'm Pastor Kevin Wright, and uh, I represent New Beginnings Christian Life Center Church. Amen. Praise God. And once again, I do count of the honor and the privilege to bring the word of God before you today. Amen. How many of y'all enjoying that good weather out there? We just got some remarkable weather here in our great state of Mississippi. Amen. Praise God. I just want to encourage you guys. You can go to the park. You can go outdoors. You know, you can walk in the neighborhood a little bit, you know, and just be careful out there, depending on what neighborhood you live in. Just picking, just picking with you guys. But amen. You know, we try to do a little walking every now and then and just go out to the park, you know, and and, you know, just chill out and have a little fun and and get a breather, you know, because sit, sitting up in the house, it'll get next to you after a while, you know. Amen. Praise God. So, again, we do want to welcome all our Facebook family and friends, and we want to encourage you to call somebody. Go share it. Go tell them that uh, New Beginnings is live. Pastor Wright is live. He's getting ready to preach the word of God. Amen. How many of you guys have been blessed thus far? Yeah. How many of you have been blessed on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock? Yeah p.m. Central Time, and then on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Central Time. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So we want to encourage you. If this is your way of soul winning, or this is your way of getting the word out, it's it's up to you guys, you know. So you need to call your friends, share the post, everything. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. All right. How many of you are ready to get into God's word? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today. That this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And now, God, we thank you that as we delve into your word, we thank you that your word will come alive to us. And, Father, we just thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And, Lord, we just thank you for uh, revelation knowledge. Thank you for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach us, lead us, and guide us into all truth. I thank you, Lord, that I'll not miss it to the left nor to the right, but I'll follow your perfect will concerning this subject today. And Lord, I just thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. So Lord, we covenant with you in advance to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed today through your holy written word. In Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter four. And we'll get just get right into some of the things that we, we're going to be covering. And we're going to pick up where we left off at. Praise God. Our subject matter is give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Yeah. Ephesians chapter four. One of our text scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27. How many of you have your Bible? You got your notebook and ink pen and pencil? Get ready to take some good notes. Amen. We got another subject, amen, to cover today. I should say another topic under our main subject, which is give Satan no place. But I'm going to add one more place that we do not need to leave. We don't need to leave that door open. Huh? No, we need to close the window. Amen. Shut the doors and seal in the cracks. So close the windows, shut the door and seal in the cracks. One more time. Close the windows, shut the door and seal in the cracks. Ephesians chapter four and verse 27. The apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, he tells them this. He says, neither give place to the devil. Mm -hmm. Neither give place to the devil. Well, we found out that that word place in the Greek is the Greek word topos, topos, or topos, topos. It refers to no space, no landmass, or geographical location. Okay. okay. So give Satan no place. Don't give him no space, no landmass, no geographical location. How many have found out if you let Satan jump in the car with you, he can start out in the trunk. You ain't careful, and if you turn around, he'll be in the back seat. And then if he in the back seat starting out, you ain't careful, he'll be on the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Then if you let him in on the passenger side, you ain't careful, he'll be trying to drive. 
He'll be trying to drive your car, the car of your life. So once again, the apostle Paul said, give Satan no place. Now again, this word topos, it carries the idea of territory or province or zone, or once again, geographical region. So it carries the idea of territory. Don't give him no territory. Mm -hmm. Don't give him no land mass, no land mass. Don't give him a mile, don't give him an inch, don't give him anything, right? Mm -hmm. And that is where we get the word topography, which uh, references to a detailed description on a map of the natural features of a particular area or region. Mm -hmm. That's where you get that word from, okay? So again, Paul says here, neither give place, don't give him no topo, no topography. Don't give him no geographical location. Don't give him no space. Don't give him no landmass. Don't give him nothing. Amen, because if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. I mean, he'll take a country mile. I mean, you know, there's a difference in a city mile and a country mile. Yeah. So you got to be so careful. Amen. Yeah. And we also mentioned because the word topos depicts a geographical location, it lets us know that the devil is after every region and zone of our lives. Mm -hmm. What is he after? He's after our finances. He's after our family. Yeah. He's after our health. He's after our relationships. He's after our businesses. He's after our ministry. Give Satan no place. Give him no topaz. Don't give him an inch. Don't give him a mile. Don't give him anything. Amen. I said amen. Now, the Amplified Bible says this about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. The Amplified Bible put it this way. Don't give Satan an opportunity. Oh, I like that word. Don't give him an opportunity. Don't give him an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. That's good. That's good. But I like part A. It said, don't give Satan an opportunity. Now, the King James Bible said what? The King, King James Version said this. said, don't give place to the devil. Now, the Amplified Bible said, don't give Satan an opportunity. Don't give him a chance. Yeah. Don't give him an opportunity. Why? He's an opportunist. Yeah. You take advantage of every opportunity you give him. Now, the Message Bible goes on to say this about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. It said, don't give the devil a foothold, a foothold in your life. And then an another translation put it this way. Don't give the devil a chance. Don't give him a chance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said, because why? He's going to try to take advantage of that chance. Yeah. So the apostle Paul told us not to give place to the devil. And that Greek word topography or topos makes it clear that we must choose not to give the devil any territory in our lives. Just reading from uh, the Greek, the Greek word there for place, don't give him no place. It tells us, don't give him no type of opportunity. Don't give him no territory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians, our second text scripture. 1 yeah. Thessalonians chapter 5. All right, and verse 22. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. And these, again, were our text scriptures. Amen. So we saw from Ephesians 4, 27, give Satan no place. Don't give him no place, no opportunity, no landmass, no territory. Don't give him nothing. That's right. Amen. Now, 1 Thessalonians <coughs> chapter 5 and verse 22. Once again, the Apostle Paul writing to the church where now? In Thessalonica. He says here in verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Mm. Which simply means that you must be able to see sin at a distance. You must be able to see evil from afar. Okay? Now, this is what the Amplified Bible said. Abstain from every form of evil. And the Message Bible put it this way. Throw away everything tainted with evil. Wow. See? Wow. So give Satan no place. Mm -hmm. 
Anything that smells like it's wrong, get, get away from it. One translation says, run and stalk terror. <laughs> yeah, run and stalk terror. When you see, you can see evil coming from a distance. You need to go the opposite way. Run and stalk terror. Why? Because Satan, he's trying to come in so he can get a foothold. Yeah. Don't wait till he get up there uh, uh, to the gate you know, in front of your house and then he opened the gate. No, he's, he's come too close. You got to deal with the devil from a distance. You got to deal with him from afar because you don't want him to get too close. Now, if you let him get to the gate before we get to your house, next thing you know, he'll be ringing your doorbell. No, don't, don't let him at your house. Don't let him at your doorbell or knocking, knocking on your door. No, he's come way too close. That's called don't straddle the fence. If, if he's ringing the doorbell and knocking at the door, trying to come in, trying to get the advantage, uh, 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 trying to get some land mass, you have allowed the devil to come way too close. Uh, are are y'all with me? Okay. So again, I'm quickly recapping. And, and so we went on and talked about that you and I never have to fall prey to the devil. If we shut every door, close every window, and seal up every crack in our lives through which the enemy would try to gain access. We don't have to fall. Uh, you don't have to fall. Find a neighbor and tell them. You don't have to fall. And the way you don't fall is don't give Satan no place. Don't give Satan no place. Now, are you trying to say that you have never missed it? No, I didn't say that. You said that. But I don't ever plan on missing it. Will I? Probably will, but I don't plan on it. I don't plan on missing the mark. Do you? Christians don't practice sin. Christians commit sin, but you don't practice it. There's a big difference. I ain't got time to talk about that. Uh, that's an issue for another day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So uh, you should have the same mentality. I don't ever, ever plan on missing the mark. I don't ever plan on sin. Sin means to miss the mark. Okay. But we should never plan on doing that, right? right? Amen. Praise God. So don't allow the devil to get a foothold in your mind and in your emotions. Deal with him from a distance, from afar. You see him coming north, run south. You see him coming east, run west. Get away. Give Satan no place. Say that four times. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Yeah. So then we moved on from there. Of course, we had a lot more to say about that. So we begin to talk about five areas that we leave the door open in our lives. Five areas that we leave the door open in our lives. Now, again, just to name a few. Now, there could be other doors related to it, other issues and other areas. But we're just going to deal with five of what I believe are some of the main doors that we got to be so careful about. And if we leave the door open in any of these five areas that I'm about to mention, we give the devil room. See, you give him space. <coughs> give Satan no room, no space, no topaz, no landmass. But if we leave the door open in any of these five areas that I am about to mention, we give the devil room, space, land mass to operate in our lives. You give the devil room to operate in our lives. We give him the opportunity to take advantage of us. And how many know we shouldn't want the devil to take advantage of us? No, you don't want the devil taking advantage of you. No, you don't. But if you leave the door open, you need to shut the door. If you leave the window open, I heard a person say one time, winder, just picking a little bit. If you leave the window open or you leave the window open, I believe that might have been Mainer. Uh, what was the name of that movie? I, I forget cars. the name. Cars. How many of you saw the movie Cars? I forget it. No biggie. Amen. But <laughs> in the movie Cars, Mainer said, the winder. Okay, all right, all right. I thought I'd loosen y'all up just a little bit. But you can't leave no window open. <laughs> you got to shut the doors, close the windows, and seal up the cracks. That's right. 
So we give the devil no room, no space, no, no landmass. Why? He'll try to take advantage of us. We don't have to, I'm going to say it again, we don't have to fall victim to the enemy's tactics. We don't have to fall victim to the enemy tactics. Now turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Amen. 2 Corinthians, give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. No landmass, no room, no space, nothing. Nope. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, I believe it is. Lest Satan, now Paul writing to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not what? Ignorant of his devices. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, I kind of looked this up in several other translations, two other translations. First of all, from the Message Bible here, it says here, after all, we don't want to unwittingly, after all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We are not oblivious to his sly ways. Come on now. Wow. That's good. Give Satan. Don't give him no opening. Don't become a target. Find a neighbor and tell him. Don't you become a target. I'm a target now. now let's see what the Amplified Bible says. It says, to keep that second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. You know, the devil will scheme on you. We shouldn't be ignorant of his schemes. Uh, he, you know, he do the same old stuff over. He's the master of deception. The Bible calls him in Revelations, the great deceiver. Okay. So we begin to talk about five areas that we leave or Christians leave the door open in their lives. Number one, we talked about holding on to the past. Now, I'm not going to say a whole lot about that. I'll just say a few things about it. And, and, and again, you can't hold on to the past because he will use your past against you. We got to learn how to learn from our mistakes and move forward. Don't allow your past to destroy your future. Huh? Allow your past to pass you by. And it came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. And if you should fall, fall forward. Learn how to fall forward. Move forward. You got to let go of your past. If you're going to fulfill the will of God for your life, if you're going to be successful in life, you're going to have to learn how to get over your past. Amen. You can't stay in your past because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to drive forward and you're looking backwards. We must learn how to embrace God's future for our lives. I'll say it again. We must learn how to embrace, embrace God's future for our past. We must learn how to surrender to God huh? and let go. You got to let go of your past. Find a person right now. Find somebody right near you. Tell them, let go of your past. Let go of your past. Say it again. Let go of your past. Let go of your past. Now find another person. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Let go. Let of your, past, of your past, or what used to be. It's a new day. Yeah. I want to admonish you and encourage you. Keep going. No matter what other people got to say. I saw you do wrong. You did this and you did that. Ah, whatever. I've repented. I've gotten over that. Mm -hmm. You got to keep going no matter what other people say. Your one true command companion, your one true companion throughout life will be God. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. Your one true companion throughout life is God. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Another translation said, I will never abandon you. That's one person you can definitely depend on. And that's God Almighty. He said, I will never leave you nor will I abandon you. I'll be with you forever and always. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you got to learn how to forgive. You got to learn to forgive yourself. All this got to do with your past. 
You know, oftentimes, you know, that's probably one of the biggest things. Uh, just about all of us have been there. Yeah, have you ever done anything stupid? Uh, yes. Have you ever done anything that you just hit your head and said, what was I thinking about? Yes. Why did I do that? Oh, my God. Why did I think that? Why did I do it? Yeah, we've all been there, done dumb things, done stupid things. And, and some people struggle with forgiving themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They can forgive everybody but themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and when you don't forgive yourself, then certain things will begin to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, bitterness will kick in on the inside of you. Right. And, and let me tell you, we must learn how to receive forgiveness by faith. Uh, we got to learn how to receive our forgiveness by faith. You can't hold on to the past. You got to learn to forgive yourself. That's right. And I gave you multiple scriptures about that. I ain't got time to go back into all that. But we got to learn how to forgive ourselves by faith. Just like we receive our salvation by faith. Huh? How many of you always feel like you're going to make heaven your own? Or do you always feel saved? Well, well, no, you don't. huh? But are you going to heaven? Yes, I am. How do you know? Because the word of God says so. The word of God said, well, the same thing with forgiveness. Some of you right now, you don't believe God has forgiven you because of something that you've done in your past. That's right. I don't care what it might be. I'm not going to start naming a few things. And yeah. I sense a few things just Come coming up in my spirit. I, but you know them. I don't need to embarrass anyone, you know, and et cetera. But certain things has happened in your life and you having problems with forgiving yourself. I just can't believe I did that. I, boy, I tell you, I know other people say that they forgive me or, you know, I know my relatives say they forgive me or I know my pastor or somebody, but I just having problems with forgiving myself. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to learn how to forgive yourself. That's right. That's right. If you ever going to move forward, yeah. you're going to have to forgive yourself yeah. because when you have not forgiven yourself, let me tell you, sin will make you, uh, will turn you into a coward. Yeah. Forgiving yourself is not right. For you not to forgive yourself, you're saying that what Jesus did, you slap him right in the face. Uh -huh. That was the whole purpose of him going to the cross. Uh -huh. For all of your iniquities and sin and all the stuff that we get involved with. That's why Jesus went to the cross. The Bible says he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Right? Uh -huh. Forgiveness is based on the word of God, not your emotional feelings. Even if you've done somebody wrong and they stare at you, hear me, hear me now, listen. Yeah. Even if you did somebody wrong mm -hmm. and you went and you asked them, I'm sorry, please forgive me, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, I'll think about it. Don't get into that. I don't care what you're thinking about. I did what the word of God told That's me to right. do. That's right. <clears throat> I repented and I came to ask for your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of it is on you. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up into the emotions of this thing. And, and, and see, the kingdom of God don't work like that. Whether you're talking about salvation, whether you're talking about receiving the Holy Spirit, whether you're talking about receiving your healing, is I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. Yeah. I got to be moved by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. The word of God said that God is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Right. He said, as far as the east is from the west, west hey, sin is far away from you. I have forgiven you. Huh? Yeah. Your sins might be as crimson, but I'll cling you white as snow. You got to go to the word of God. And these are scriptures that we've already gave you. First John 1, 9. God is faithful and just to forgive you. Psalms 103. Forget not all his benefits who removes all your sins. Forgive you of all your sins. Yeah. Right? Isaiah 118. That he'll make you white as snow. Mm -hmm. Huh? And Isaiah 43, 25 said, I will not remember your failures. In fact, won't you go there? Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Now you either going to believe the word of God or you ain't. It's, it's one or the other. And some of you have been having problems with moving forward because you haven't forgiven yourself. Certain things has happened in your life and you think now, man, I'm reaping all that stuff that I sowed. Let me tell you, God has forgiven you. God has forgiven you. Note there in Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says here, remember ye not what? The Let me wait on you to get there. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. You got to base your forgiveness on the word of God, not what other people think about you. Mm 
Okay? Mm -hmm. You you can't get into well, I I, I don't feel like I'm gonna forgive you right now. Yeah. I'll think about it. Well, talk to the hand. I've done what the word of God had that's to say, right. and that's it. That's as far right. as I'm concerned, it's over. Okay, so Isaiah 43, verse 18. Remember ye not, remember ye not what? The former things, neither consider the things of old. I mean, that takes it to a whole nother level. He said, remember it not, or, and then he goes on to say, don't even consider it. Now, the way we talk today, don't even think about it. Have you ever told a person that? Or have somebody ever told you that? Don't you even think about it. Huh? Don't think about it, you know. Don't you even think about that. Hey, I said I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Huh? Yeah. He said that, that's it. How about verse 25? Same chapter, Isaiah 43, verse 25. I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not and will not remember your sins. So put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be what? Justified or made right. He said, come and talk to me right now. Let's get this thing straight now. Amen. Praise God. So we got to learn how to receive our forgiveness by faith. Forgiveness is based on the word of God, not your emotional feelings. Then we went on to talk about don't allow self-pity. Boy, we talked about quite a few things here. All under, you got to forget the past. All this stuff comes in forgetting the past. Don't allow self-pity, guilt, and shame to destroy you. And that's what happened when you hold on to the past. What happened? You'll get into self-pity. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen but Jesus. Yeah. There you go, having a pity party. Self-pity, then you'll feel guilty all the time. You got a, a guilt about you. And see, how you see yourself is how other people will see you. Ah. Don't you ever forget that. Yeah. Now that needs to go on Facebook. Yeah. How you see yourself, put it on Facebook. Okay. How you see yourself is how people will see you. Which means you're going to have to get into the word of God and receive your forgiveness. And if you're still holding guilt and shame and all that in you, well, then people are going to hold it against you. Or at least you'll think that they're holding it against yes. you. Yes. Okay? Hello, somebody. Yes. I said, hello, somebody. Hello. So how you see yourself is how people are going to treat you. And that's how people are going to see you. That's good. So don't allow self-pity, guilt, and shame to destroy you. Amen? So, and of course, we had a whole lot of stuff to say about that. All right. Let's jump on over here. To part two. Amen. Praise God. Uh, again, we're talking about give Satan no place. I mean, you can see, don't you give Satan place on you holding on to the past. Number two. What time is it? Oh, boy. Okay. Unconfessed sins. Unconfessed sins. This is something you got to look. You got to shut the door, close the windows, seal up the cracks when they come to unconfessed sins. Now listen carefully. We claim the forgiveness of Jesus or God when we admit that we are sinners. Mm -hmm. See, we claim the forgiveness of God when we admit, that's the key, when we admit that we are sinners. So you know that initially from the start. That's how you got born again. You claim the forgiveness of God when you admit it, Lord. It's called the sinner's prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. You just confess. You just said it. Confession is powerful. Okay? We confess and repent because God wants us to be, watch this. Some of y'all just need to take notes. Why do we confess our sin? We confess and repent because God wants us to be in continual, intimate relationship with him. Yes. We confess and repent. Why? Because God wants us to be in continual intimate relationship with him because when we miss the mark Jesus is still the Lord of our life but we're out of fellowship okay you get out of fellowship not relationship mm -hmm. okay but you get out of fellowship and that's why we should practice confessing and repenting why because we'll continually stay intimate with our relationship with God now, I mean it's like a husband and wife 
If if you've done wrong, you know, whatever it might be, ain't got to be nothing major. It can be small stuff too, y'all. But, you know, when you don't like, you start out the day wrong and, you know, you're trying to get fresh with your wife or her husband, I should say, and, and you start out the day wrong, arguing and fussing and all that. Well, later on that evening, ain't going to be no function at the junction. Okay? Why? Because y'all out of fellowship. Come on now, talk to me now, y'all. Y'all talk to me now. The fellowship is broken. Now, you still my wife, you still my husband. <laughs> but the fellowship is broken. That's why it's important that we confess and repent because God wants to be in what? Continual, intimate relationship with us. Confession of sin is absolutely necessary to restore broken fellowship between God and his people. Confession of sin is absolutely necessary to restore fellowship between God and his children. The word confess means to acknowledge your sin or your wrongs. That's why, you know, you, you can't have no unconfessed sins in your heart. Brother Hagin told us to be quick to forgive and quick to repent. Quick to forgive and quick to repent. Don't you ever forget that. Be quick to forgive and quick to repent. Yeah. Quick to repent quick to repent. Don't wait. Because, man, look, when you sin or you miss the mark, you just left the door open. What's the title of our sermon? Give Satan no place. When you sin, you just left the door open for Satan to come in. You just gave him some landmass. You gave him an opportunity to get some stuff brewed in your life. To get to stirring up some mess in your life. Are you with me? Okay, so confess means to acknowledge your sin or wrong. I mean, that's, look, I don't have a problem with people missing the mark. People go miss the mark, you know what I mean? But it's when you got folk that don't think they ever missed the mark. That's where I got problems. Yeah. So you think you ain't never missed it, huh? Oh, you just perfect, huh? Right. Oh, okay. You just missed it right there because you just lied. Mm -hmm. You just lied. My God, you just admit you're wrong. Own up to it. Fess up. Right. Uh, like they say out in the street, fess up, baby. Just, hey, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Right. Just make it right and let's move forward. Uh -huh. Right? Oftentimes when you commit a wrong, you feel distant from God. Don't you feel a little distant from God when you yeah. miss it? Yeah. Man, you're like, God, I messed up. You know, I missed the mark. on. Oh, boy. You, you kind of feel, I don't even know the right words to say. But you feel something, you, you feel a gap in there, a wedge in there somewhere. Now, he's still your Lord, he's still your God master, but you feel a little wedge in there. It's almost like a husband and wife or two friends. You know, when you done, done wrong and you don't even want to talk to folk. Come on now, let me bring it on home. Somebody say, Pastor, bring that thing on home. Bring that thing on home. I'm about to. I'm about to bring it on home. You know, when you fall out with a relative or a friend, and then they try to call you or something like that. And we got call ID, right? You know, everybody fancy nowadays. Come on, talk to them. You got call ID. And you say, oh, Sister John, I ain't talking to them right now. Oh, no, Brother John. Oh, no, Lord, I, I ain't ready to talk to them yet. That's because you're still holding on to resentment. So you're still holding on to offense. You're still holding on to stuff. Oh, when you get to church, you see and you coming right toward them. Oh, you make a U-turn and go the complete opposite way. Oh, no, I ain't talking to them. Yeah. I tell you right there that there's friction there. There's friction there. Mm -hmm. Are y'all still with me or are you going home? Still with you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if you want to have a strong relationship with God, you must confess your faults. You got to confess your sins. Refusing to admit sin will damage your relationship with God because you'll be constantly out of fellowship and you don't want to be in that position because one day you may need a healing. You may need a prosperity. Talk to me, y'all. You may need some favor. You may need, but you out of fellowship. And you know, the goodness of the Lord, the, the mercy of God, how many times have we done, done wrong and God still blessed us? Yeah. Man, let me tell you. Don't you wear out his mercy. Uh, the, the scripture put it this way. Don't frustrate the grace of God. Look that up. Look up frustrate the grace of God. Scripture tell you that. Huh? Yeah. Don't frustrate the grace of God. You know, when you miss the mark, let me tell you, his mercies are new every morning. Lamentations tells us that. His mercy is new every morning. But don't take advantage of the grace of God. 
I said, don't take advantage of the grace of God. Yeah. Don't get into frustrating the grace of God. Amen. Just, just, just admit you're wrong. You can't lie to God. How you going to lie to Jesus? You can't. Come on. He's omnipotent. He's all knowing. He's everywhere at once. Omnipresent. Come on. Just fess on up. Lord, I missed it. There it is. I missed it flat out. Don't, don't try to fix it. Twist it. You know how we do each other. Well, I didn't mean that. It, you see, actually, with man, look, you're wrong. That's it. You're just wrong. That's all. You're wrong. What you did is wrong. Now, let's move on. Oftentimes, people will forgive you and just move on. Yeah, but, you know, you sitting there trying to justify wrong. Oh, yeah. you justify it. You did it. Did you say it? Yeah, I said it. There it is. And, and then they move on. I've seen that even in the secular world. When you just come on out, yeah, I did it. What about it? Yeah, I'm wrong. I'm flat wrong. And, you know, they, they will forget it. The world will forget it and move on. But when you sit there and act like, uh, you know, that you ain't done nothing and insult my intelligence, now we got problems. That's even in the world. When it look like you insulting their intelligence, oh, they coming after you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. Y'all getting something out of this? So unconfessed sins. Don't give Satan place with unconfessed sins. Just deal with it. Be quick to repent. Be quick to forgive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First John chapter 1, verse 6. Are y'all there? Come, come. My time is ticking, y'all. Come on here. First John chapter 1 and verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? All sin. Now watch verse 8. If we say that we have not sinned, uh -huh. we deceive ourselves. And the truth ain't in you. Uh -huh. Ain't that what I just said a minute ago? Uh -huh. Oh, I ain't never missed it. I, is that right? It's always somebody else's fault, right? <laughs> it ain't never your fault. Right there, I know you're lying. Because uh -huh. it can't be everybody wrong and you the only one right. It's not happening. Right. You need to check yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to smell yourself. Check yourself. It might be you. Oh. Come on now. I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah. Verse 9. If we confess our sins or our shortcomings, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from half. Oh. Some of it. Oh. From how much? Oh. What does all mean? Everything. What's left after all? Nothing. Nothing. From all sins. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 said, but if we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar. Uh -huh. And his word ain't in you. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I ain't got nothing else to say behind that. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. There is cleansing in the confession of our sins to God and to one another. Mm -hmm. How about James chapter 5? That's good, sir. Confession. Yeah. Unconfessed sins. We got to deal with that. But when you got unconfessed sins. You leave the door open, man. You got to shut that. You got to, what, shut the window, close the door, and seal up the cracks. Let's, I think I'm going to keep saying that until it become a cliche. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. You got to do what with the window? Shut the windows, close the door, seal up the crack. Shut the windows, close the door, and seal up the crack. One more time. Shut the windows, close that door. Or doors mm -hmm. and seal up the cracks. Seal the crack. James chapter 5 and verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. And I love verse 16. Confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yeah. You see that there? Uh -huh. Confess your faults one to another. Com confession is good for the soul, man. Yeah. When you can get it out. All the time when you holding that stuff in, it'll become like an upset stomach. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had an upset stomach before? Mm -hmm. And then some people go get what? Maalox, uh, Petmo Bismol, drink a little, a little salt water, and all kinds of remedies out here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that stomach is blue, 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 blue. 
Then, boy, you oh, Jesus, my stomach. And you ain't speaking in tongues either. That's your stomach making all that noise. Why? Because there's something in there and it's got to get out. Now, I don't know about you and you may say, well, pastor, you're gross. Man, when I get that upset stomach, I ain't going to sit sit down and lay in the bed for hours. I'm putting that finger down that throat. That, oh, pastor, yeah, you you got it. I put my finger down that throat and it blue, 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 blue. It come out. And boy, I feel so much better. Yeah. Woo! Man, I feel set free when you can get that junk out of you. It's the same thing with unconfessed sins. When you can get that mess out of you, woo, you feel like a brand new person. My God. And then, and then watch this. Then your appetite come back. Have you ever noticed after you regurgitate and throw up and all that? Man, you get real hungry. Well, see, the same thing spiritually. Whoa, I just saw that. That ain't in my notes. It just, it sounds pretty good. As the Bible says in the book of Acts, it seemed good. <laughs> it seemed good to me. Yeah. Yeah. When you get it out, then your appetite comes right back. Your appetite for God comes right back. But you got to get that mess out. Man, now that's revelation knowledge right there. Man, your appetite will come right back. Yep, 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 yep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you know, uh, there, there was a man by the name of David. That David was a man after God's very own heart. And it was something about David. It wasn't that David was perfect, but it was something about his heart. Turn with me to Psalms 51 as we're winding down now. Psalms 51. Are y'all getting something out of this? Yeah, man, after you get that stuff out your stomach, you didn't eat the wrong food or something like that, you got to get it out. You got Something got to work with it. You got to get it out. And once you get it out, it's amazing. Not too long after, your appetite comes right back. Ooh, your appetite for God comes right back. Oh, glory to God. But you got to get that unconfessed sins out of you. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah 51. In verse 1, have mercy upon me, O God. Talking about the Psalm of David. According to thy loving kindness. Let's take a look at David's heart. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my sins, my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I, what? Acknowledge. Underline that word. Highlight that word. Circle that. I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. I like that. He had sinned with Bathsheba. He said, I'm acknowledging my wrong. You, you, you got to get it out of you. You, you got to get it out. And your appetite will return back for God. How about Psalms 32? Psalms 32. Psalms 32. Once again, David, in verse 5, are you there? I acknowledge my sin. There's David again. He, boy, he was just hardcore to the point. I'm wrong. I'm just wrong. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my sin or iniquity have I not hid. Oh, boy. Underline, have I not hid? You can't hide sin. Let me tell you, like, like, like my old pastor used to say, and, 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 and let me tell you, he said, your sin, boy, will find you out. <laughs> Elder Bradley used to say, your sin, he preached, you know. He, uh, for some of you that's watching my Facebook live, uh, that's my old elder, you know, from the apostolic church. He, you know, boy, they preached a lot on sin. Now, I'm not advocating that, but he, he used to say, your sin will find you out. Mm -hmm. See, I was young, but real young back then. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the older you get, your sin will find you. You may run. Boy, he used to he he throw them shoulders back. He's a big big man, like a, like a linebacker. Elder Brentley said, "You may run, but you can't hide." Lord have mercy. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, "I will confess 
my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity, note there, and th thou did what? You forgave the iniquity of my sin. Yeah. You forgave me, Lord. Forgave. There are three, the three sweetest words in the English vocabulary. I wonder what they are. The three sweetest words in the English vocabulary. Think about it. I even got my wife sitting here. You think about it. What are the three sweetest words in the English vocabulary? I love you. That's right. Pastor, where are you going with the, you know I'm working on something. Y'all should just figure that out by now. The three sweetest words in the English vocabulary is I love you. But the hardest words to say is I have sinned. I have sins. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now David. David became a man after God's own heart. Quickly turn to uh, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. See, that's the difference in David and King Saul. Saul turned. He, he repented. There's some scriptures that show us. Saul repented. He turned, but never came back. His heart wasn't good. Right. God had to get another king. I wish I had a little time to perfect that. Uh -huh. I don't. Uh -huh. uh, but let, let's go. Let's let's see. I might touch it. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. There's a big difference in King Saul and David. Sure, yeah. David acknowledged his sins, and he yeah. stayed true to God, yeah. even though he missed it big time. Uh -huh. But he still stayed true to God. And you'll find David over in the book of Hebrews in God's hall of faith. Yeah. Even though he missed it big time, I mean, he did several things, but you find him over in God's hall of faith yeah. in the book of Hebrews, uh -huh. okay? But no, there, Acts chapter 13, uh, let's see, verse 22, I believe it is. Yeah, and when he had removed him, he raised unto him David to be their king. They got rid of Saul, uh -huh. okay? To whom also he gave testimony and said, what? I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. He was a young man of humility. He didn't mind repenting. He didn't mind saying, I'm wrong. I am wrong. Huh? So, you know, you got to be so careful there. Then you go over there to 1 Samuel. Let's go back quickly to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, and we'll kind of end here, hopefully. 1 Samuel, chapter 16. And verse 1. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1. But it was something about that Saul. What was it about King Saul? And the Lord said, verse 1, 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing, I have rejected him for reigning over Israel. I'm sorry. And the Lord said unto Samuel, okay. How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing, I have rejected him from, rege from reigning. Note there. I have what? Rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among Israel. His sons. Now go back to uh, chapter 15. So God rejected Saul. Then you go to chapter 15 and verse 11. Notice here what the Lord said. Uh, verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel the prophet saying, It repented me that I have even set Saul up to be king. Good Lord. Wow. God said, I had repented. I even made him king. For he has turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Wow. I saw his heart. It was a matter of the heart. Uh, there's something about it. And then you jump over there to verse, what, 24? Let's see what he did. Verse 24. First Samuel 15, verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. See, he admitted, but for I have transgressed. I wonder how. The commandments of the Lord and thy word, because I did what? I feared the people mm -hmm. and I obeyed their voice. That's what it gets you in trouble every time. Ooh. 
fearing people. Especially for some of you leaders, some of you that call yourself ministers and all that. You call yourself mature. You can't go with the people. You got to go with God. Because see, the people are going to always choose what's going to satisfy them. But what is God saying? I said, what is God saying? I said, what is God saying? Yeah, but uh, Saul, he went with the people. And that is not what God wanted. Huh? You know, he saved the king. He spared some of the best flock. He just did a lot of, he, he disobeyed God. That is not God said, kill it all. Destroy everything. And he, he did not obey. Then how about chapter 18? Quickly. Quickly, y'all, quickly. First Samuel 18, verse 14. <coughs> it's good, isn't it? It's yes. good. That's the difference between Saul, King Saul and David. David's heart was right. He had a repentful heart. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, once again, we got to deal with unconfessed sins. And when you got unconfessed sins, you leave the door open. The Bible says, give Satan no place. Note that verse 14, mm -hmm. 1 Samuel 18, verse 14. And David behaved himself. Some of y'all ain't never seen that. What? And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. Wow. And the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he became afraid of David. So, yeah. Now, uh, let me end with this. Let me end with this. Confession and repentance does five things. Confession and repentance does five things. Number one, it causes us to acknowledge and take responsibility for our sin, for our wrongdoing. It causes us to acknowledge and take responsibility for our sin. And one good thing about this Facebook Live, you can always go back and hear the sermon over again, okay? And number two, it proves that we are not trying to hide our sin. Mm -hmm. We're talking about confession and repentance does five things. It causes us to acknowledge and take responsibility for our sin. Number two, it proves that we're not trying to hide our sin. Yeah. And number three, it shows that we are asking for and relying on God's strength. That we're asking for and relying on God's strength, strength to help us change. Yes. And number four, it allows us to be continually healed when we're quick to repent, when we have a repentful heart, when we confess our sins, our wrongdoing, our shortcomings. And number five, and most importantly, confession and repentance sustains our relationship with God. There'll be continual fellowship. There'll be intimacy there all the time. Why? Because we got a repentful heart. We confess our faults. We confess our shortcomings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and just, just jot the scripture down. In Acts chapter 24, verse 16. Acts chapter 24. And I'm going to go there quickly. You just jot it down. Acts chapter 24. And verse 16, watch this. And herein do I exercise, Paul said, herein do I exercise myself to always or to have always a what? A conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. <laughs> That's good. And then Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, that we should walk circumspectly. Mm -hmm. We should always be checking our heart. And you know when things ain't quite right, guys. Trust me, you will know. You, you will know. My, my wife and I, and I'll say that in closing, we were at, uh, I believe, uh, either at Walmart or Kroger's. Yep. And my wife, uh, you know, we were self-checking, right? And we was at Sam's Club. And we were self-checking our stuff. You know how you self-check with that little gun they got? Beep, 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 beep. And she had checked everything but one item. But she didn't know it. And, and then I wasn't watching closely. And I was there with her. And so when we got to the car and we began to unload all that stuff, you know, into the trunk, right? 
And my wife noticed that one item. She said, I didn't pay for this. I didn't, I didn't check this. I didn't check this. I'm taking this back. Absolutely. And guess what? She took that one item back. Even though she was cleared to go. Now she could have just took off. Why would you mess? Hear me? Why would you mess up your blessings over that one little item that you know you didn't pay for? You can't sit there in the car and say, Oh, that the favor of the law. That the favor of the law. Blessing me. No, you still it. Because you know her heart. The Bible talks about if your heart condemn you, then you have sinned. If your heart condemns you about that, oh, Lord, maybe I ought to take. What if your heart don't condemn you? Oh, oh Jesus, boy. we do got problems. Like Creflo Dollar said, maybe it didn't take. <laughs> Creflo, boy, he crazy. He said, maybe your salvation didn't take. But but you, you know when you ain't right. And, and my wife looked and he said, huh. I don't think I pay for this. And she kind of looked at her receipt and everything. I didn't pay for this. And she took it right back in there and gave it to the person at the front door and said, I didn't pay for this. And I'm sorry. And she she came on back to the car. Now, what if she'd have kept it? Talking about the Lord blessed her. She'd have opened the door. Now, you might be believing God for your health and your healing. You might be believing God for a breakthrough in your finances. You might be believing God for favor. And you sitting up there and loud a pack of hot dogs and mess all that up. Oh, right. It might have been a pack of a pack of biscuits. Some biscuits that messed up your blood. You didn't open up the door on some biscuits or or, or, or a pack of hot dogs or kibasas. Come on, a bag of chips. You know you didn't pay for. You just opened the door. You you knew you didn't pay for them, and you went on anyway. You just opened that door open for Satan. You just gave him land mass. You gave him. Topos. You gave him place and opportunity to get in your life. Wow. Wow. Shut the windows, close the doors, and seal up the cracks. Yeah. Give Satan no place. Hey, Amen. Stop, bro, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, well, I'm done for the day. Amen. Perhaps there might be someone that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hey, I love to pray with you. Hey, I love to pray with you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So I love to pray the sinner's prayer with you today. In fact, I want everybody to join in with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I'm, ready I'm ready to come to you now, Lord. Lord, you said in your word, Lord, you said in your word if I confess with my mouth, that Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. And if I believe in my heart, in my that heart, God has raised you from the dead, God has you Lord, from the Lord dead. you said, Lord, you I'll, be born again. I'll be born again. So Lord, right now, so Lord, right now I, call upon you. I call upon you. Lord, come into my life. Lord, come into my life. I make you right now, I make you right now my, Lord, my Lord, Savior, Savior and, Master. and Master. I turn from my old wicked ways. And I turn to you now, Lord. And I, you, and I believe in my heart, in my heart that God raised you from the dead, from on, the dead. The day. on the third day. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're right now, yeah, right now. My, savior. my Savior. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the body of Christ. Yeah. Boy, we're so happy for you. We want to encourage you to find yourself a good church home Lord. where you can grow and develop or just continue to watch us on Facebook Live. And yeah, we, you know you're going to get fed the word of God. Sure. Very important that you get into church and be, become a part of our accountability group so that you can be discipled. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. Well, it's opportunity to prosper time. Glory. It's time to give, y'all. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible says, The giving it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, sickening together, and running over. So men give unto your bosom. Amen. Praise God. The Bible goes on to say also that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. So God says you, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give to him is the more he'll give to you. The word of God goes on to say in the book of Malachi, bring ye all the tithes and offerings unto the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith. 
with what? Your tithes and offerings, that if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. Amen. Praise God. So I, I, I just thank God for your support on behalf of my wife and I and New Beginnings. We thank God for your support. And as you continue to support us, it'll cause New Beginnings to enlarge its sense so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Amen. There's three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. There's three ways. Number one, through PayPal. And you can send that to New Beginnings, plural, or S, C-L-C dot org. That's New Beginnings, S, plural, C-L-C dot org, and that's via PayPal. Or you can go through Cash App at New Beginnings, plural, C-L-C. New Beginnings, plural, C-L-C. Or you can just simply just mail it in to P.O. Box 320658. P.O. Box 320658. And that's Flowood, Mississippi. Flowood, Mississippi 39232. Well, let's all hold up our offering to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let us agree in faith. In Jesus' name. Father, once again, we do count on the honor and the privilege to give. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, you get back to us good measure. Prince now, second together, and running over, so men get back to our bosom. And Lord, we thank you that it, as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world with a glorious gospel. Ministering spirits, go forth now and cause our return to come unto us, for we believe that we receive a 100-fold return in this lifetime, wealth and riches of being our house and divine favor will be everywhere. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. All that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, on behalf of my wife and I, we love you guys and we look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. We look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. We're going to begin a new topic. I'm not going to tell you right now. Oh, I man. want you to be surprised. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. And on behalf of my wife and I, we love you and be blessed.